Hello friends, this is Satrupa and thank you for uh, viewing my video. So this video is about my journey of F1 visa dropbox interview appointment this year. Uh, so I am planning to go to the US and study there uh, starting this fall semester. I am planning to join Oklahoma State University MSIM program and for that I had applied for an F1 visa in the month of April. And when I realized that I was eligible for this interview waiver. Now there are a lot of questions that what is this interview waiver? What, what is this Dropbox appointment? What is the procedure for F1 students? What documents you might need uh, to clear this kind of a process and get your visa issued? So this is a video where you'll be able to understand that what are the documents you need? What is the process? How the statuses get changed and how, how and when do you get your visa issued? So I'll share my experience with all of you. So starting with the eligibility. Now, why was I eligible for this interview waiver? You all must have this question in mind. So I was eligible because I already had a B1, B2 visa, uh, which was issued by my previous employer for a small business travel to the US. And it's a valid visa right now. I am applying from the same country which uh, I had applied before. And apart from that, I mean, I was not rejected in, in my previous interview. I was uh, issued the visa for the first time and uh, I cleared it through. So these were the criteria for which uh, I was eligible for this interview waiver this year. Uh, this interview waiver program has started recently. There's a link in the description below where you can check that whether uh, you are eligible for this interview waiver or not. Coming to the documents. So when you start with your uh, application for your F1 visa application to the US, what you do is you go to the DS-160 portal and fill out your full application form. You will be getting uh, the confirmation page at the end of your uh, DS-160 filling process. So that confirmation page printout is very important when you go for a Dropbox appointment. Okay. Next is for booking the Dropbox appointment, you have to go and uh, register yourself in the CGI portal. Usually, if you already hold a prior visa, you have access to CGI portal. But sometimes what happens, what happened in my case, I had my uh, sign in already with my previous employer's email ID. Now, when I'm applying for my student's visa, I wanted to apply it through my own personal email ID. For that, I had to email uh, my request to the support travel uh, desk. Uh, I I'll share that email ID also in this uh, and you can email to them, they will raise a ticket immediately and uh, they will change your uh, email ID from your previous employee's email ID to your personal email ID if you need that. And it's a very hassle-free process. It takes about like one to two business days to get this issue resolved and you, you can go ahead and book your appointment for your F1 visa interview or a Dropbox appointment, whatever is your requirement. So when you book the appointment through the CGI portal, you will need to pay your MRV fee. So once you pay the MRV fee, it takes about like what one day or something to update in the CGI portal. So once it gets updated, you can go ahead and book your appointment based on the slots which will show up in the screen. Now, once you book your appointment, that appointment confirmation page is again very important. So till now I have talked about two documents. First is the DX160 confirmation page and the second is the Dropbox appointment confirmation page. The third thing is what you need is your I-20 photocopy. So it's very important to note here that they will definitely ask for your I-20 but don't submit the original. Please submit the photocopy because in my experience when they return, the, return my passport with my visa approved, they didn't return any document. They kept it with them. So it's better not to submit the original I-20, always go, go with the photocopy of your I-20 and make sure uh, your graduate uh, college has uh, had put the initials in your I-20 because that's how they validate it. So there's a lot of background check that happens for uh, Dropbox candidates. So you have to make sure whatever documents you submit, uh, those has to be like, you know, issue free. Uh, just try to ensure that. The next uh, document which you will need to submit is your original passport. Now this passport should have your previous visa um, uh, visa stamping in it, uh, which should be valid uh, currently. And you, as I said, like you'll get all the eligibility criteria mentioned in the link which I've shared in the description. 
and uh, so this original passport is very important if you have your prior visa in some older passport then make sure you bring both the new and the old old passports with you and uh, i guess you have to submit that i didn't have that uh, scenario so i don't know what will happen for those kind of candidates but usually when you if you having more, more than one passport so better carry all the passports with you the photo usually with 80% of your face visible in the photo with your ears and nose and each and every facial organ uh, clearly visible in the photograph you can check uh, the us specification of photograph link which i've shared below to get yourself well prepared for your uh, visa drop box appointment so that your photograph is up to the mark and i have heard that if your photograph is not up to the mark they might uh, ask for a new photo or they keep your application on hold and there can be complexities so let's ensure to have everything at the at the right place at the right time and in the right form uh, to get our visa issued as soon as possible okay coming to uh, the next part of it so these are the documents so as i mentioned you need the ds160 confirmation page you need the um, appointment the visa drop box appointment confirmation page the third thing which you need is the i20 photocopy so that is very important i20 photocopy with your graduate uh, authority they have uh, put the initials on it it's very important the original passport and the fifth thing is your uh, photograph that that's very very important so these are the five documents which they took from me in my visa uh, drop box appointment uh, day and i submitted them it was just a just what to say 10 to 15 minutes job to just stand in a queue and then submit these documents and then come back home next day you can go to the ciac application status tracker so i'll share that link also in the description below where uh, you can go ahead and find the status of your application which you have submitted uh, the previous day so i'll share my status changes it's it was quite uh, you know cranky i would call it in that way and uh, after which i got my visa issued uh, so i'll tell you all the dates and what about the status changes how i felt and what i did about it and what not so let's begin with that on 13th april i submitted my documents and i came back on 19th april my visa status as shown in the screenshot here it changed to application received after which uh, i think the next status change so i used to keep following up every day checking this portal that where is my visa where, what is the status of the process uh, i mean what's the status of it and all all these things so as far as i remember on 19th april the status suddenly changed to refused and as you can uh, understand that when suddenly your visa status gets changed to refuse it's always a very panicky situation a very situation of a lot of stress and what not so i consulted with a lot of people over uh, social media over i i checked you youtube experiences also for previous dropbox candidates but this f1 uh, visa category was very rare previously like this um, process of this doc drop box appointments and how it goes for f1 candidates is very rare and that was one reason for which i'm making this video so uh, on 19th april it got changed to refused now there are so when so if your status gets changed to refused the few days just after you have submitted the application please don't get panicked seeing your status as refused it can indicate two possibilities first is they might return your visa back within 1 to 2 business days uh, issuing you a 221g slip so i'll talk more about the 221g slip what it is and what you need to do about it the next possibility is your visa is not actually refused it is put on hold for some background check and until that background check happens your status will remain refused and you'll get to know your original your actual status Uh, only after uh, seven to ten business days from the date you have submitted your application, so please make sure uh, that you wait till the seventh to tenth business day and then get panicked if needed. But I'll suggest please don't panic, please don't get stressed stressed at all, because um, I have experienced this. I was a lot stressed and 
I was I was not feeling <laughs> like to sleep for nights, and I was thinking that my visa got rejected, and uh, my passport is also not returned. I don't know how to follow up. I was calling here and there, support travel, and all those people, but everyone suggested me just one thing: that we have to wait until the seventh to tenth business day comes. and only after that you can do something about your application if required usually within that you'll get some or the other intimation either positive negative whatever it might be now talking about the 221 g slip so i've heard about a lot of uh, my fellow dropbox candidates who have been issued a 221 g so for them also the status got changed to refused and they were issued a 221 g and that slip along with the passport was returned back to them one to two business days later after the status got changed so what is that so 221g is issued to you under section so it's under section 221g what happens it's the immigration Im- immigration and nationality act as far as i remember uh, what it means is your visa application got refused by a consular officer because uh, they found that your application didn't have the required information needed to judge your case so usually in a 221g slip they will tell you that what extra document you need to submit so that they can process your request further or they might ask you they might call you to the consulate for your uh, biometrics or for a walk in interview as well so don't get panicked usually for dropbox appointments if your status gets refused usually they issue a 221g and you are called for interview and after that no don't need to be stressed at all just wait patiently for the intimation to come to you now for my case what happened my status was refused on 19th april and it stayed refused for the next uh, i think 7 or 10 business days and then my status got changed to administrative processing on um, Uh, I think twenty seventh of April. So you can understand that that the situation between that nineteenth April and twenty seventh April was a lot of stress uh, one for me. But uh, after I saw my status got changed on twenty seventh of April to administrative processing, it, there was a ray of hope that something positive might happen now. Then on twentieth April, what happened? Uh, my status got changed to issued. now when your status get changed to issued it means that they uh, your application has been approved for f1 visa and you'll get your passport in one to two business days so i received my passport on april 30th with my visa stamped in it f1 visa and um, as i mentioned they didn't return any other documents except for my photograph so make sure you submit all uh, print outs of your ds160 cgi i mean application uh, appointment confirmation and whatever else and along with that make sure for i20 you submit only the photocopy not the original because the original you might need it for your travel or during your admission in future i guess that's all for my visa experience uh, through the f1 dropbox process uh, which has been started in this year 2022 hope this video will help you to prepare yourself for this dropbox appointment and i'll share all the necessary links and uh, the list of documents which i had prepared so there was a list of supporting documents which also which i had prepared they didn't ask for it but i'll i'll share that list also with you if you want you can carry them with yourself they will not ask you 100% but you can just stay prepared if they ask in case so i guess that's all uh, for today thank you for being this video hope you'll like it and uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel thank you